वेलकम टू द फर्स्ट एडिशन ऑफ लिंकिंग ट्राइब्स एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू एनालाइज ऑनलाइन एजुकेशन एज अ बिजनेस मॉडल इन द वॉल स्ट्रीट यू नो व्हाट इट सेज keep dancing until the music stops and with respect to the online education market the music has just began Baidu has recently raised a capital of 250 million dollars from Qatar Sovian fund and it has become a darling for investors the valuation has increased from 1 mi- 1 billion dollar to 5 billion dollars another popular startup un academy has raised 50 million dollars from the investors and when it comes to money where can mr ambani be far behind the reliance group had also acquired 38.5% stake in extra marks now they are also joining this party domain of online education they are close to 3500 startups operating in india and they are catering to the lacunas in five major sectors in the ed ed, ed technology first is primary education what in the primary education the startups are doing is focusing on students by supplementing the traditional education and trying to improve the overall learning experience the startups includes the byju's qmass simply learn the second domain which we are going to talk about is reskilling so what is reskilling actually means is to make sure the employees continue to be relevant as per the present industrial standards so there are a lot of startups which are catering to to ensure that the employees are aware and abreast with the latest happening the third area the third sector is in higher education so the startups are focusing on the college students who wishes to pursue their higher education in india or abroad they are using the ai technology and other big data to provide them with assistance the startups include leverage edu and no papers form the fourth sector in this edtech industry includes test preparations the what do you mean by test preparation is like appearing for a civil service exams i i t j e so very popular startup like an academy in this particular bracket the fifth would be for the online course which is generic in nature providing with a general uh, certification on various domains like udacity and udacity let us understand what is the revenue model in case of edtech startups the first model which is more which is prevalent across almost all ed startup is a freemium model it is a combination of free version plus a premium version so most of them is just like a bait where they are trying to tell you like we have a such a premium content and you need to pay an extra price to access that so they are giving you a taste of that particular content so this is called a free premium the second kind of revenue model which is prevalent is like a uh, subscription model subscription model is like netflix is to online movies is similar way you have an entire range of content which is provided and you can access those range for ranging from 100 rupees to 1000 rupees the price may vary according to the quality of content the third kind of model which exists in these kind of startups are advertisement model so if they these brands have an partnership with these content creators and they very systematically introduce a, uh, these advertisements or brands at a key position so the fourth model which is available to these uh, in this edtech startups is an affiliate model so normally if you recommend these courses and the corresponding person purchases that course he actually gets a commission out of it source of revenue is pay per course is like every course is being charged ranging from the brand for example a byju single course has been so at a minimum price of 23000 while in case of a topper the minimum price starts at 10000 the key trends we are seeing in an education based startups are startup owners are trying to gamify the content the objective is to attract new users to make the content in a such a manner like people are able to understand appreciate and there is a, a continuous engagement towards that content the second kind of a trend we are seeing is an adoption towards an artificial intelligence people are using these software so as to understand the behavior the behavior patterns of the student and the performance metrics and accordingly based on that data they are trying to uh, make the courses 
Now let's come down to the problems this industry is facing. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. This is one of the most competitive industry and the reason is because it's not only facing the competition from online players but it is facing from the offline players. At the end of the day it's nothing but an education and we haven't changed our entire traditional system. We still have a preference towards the conventional and the traditional mode of learning. Second problem with this entire industry continues to face is a higher cost of acquisition of customers. Now the problem is you, you cannot rely on Google and Facebook. They are becoming very expensive for those keywords. Competitors, the startup owners has to spend on digital advertisement. You can see even in case of Baiju, they are the Shahrukh Khans or Shahrukh Khans and other popular celebrities are explaining you Pythagoras ads. But most of the startup owners don't have that luxury with this much positive cash reserves to afford these kind of expensive advertisements. So it becomes very what difficult to see sector is encountering is the preference and the behavior to of the Indian parents. They are not adopting it as a sole source of education. They are considering as a supplement. Now what it does, it, it puts a pressure. The student already has to go through school, it has to go through tuitions and now it has to also go through these kind of material and it is completely a draconian thing for a student. So let us understand the legal implication. First, if the startup is raising a capital from VC's angel investor, he needs to make sure the agreements are in his favor. Or at least if it is not in his favor, it is not detrimental to the interest of the promoter. So what we have seen like the VCs or the angel investors many a times act like a shark and they make sure that there is not enough skin in the game. So what happens is the promoter doesn't feel motivated enough in the long run and the startup dies in natural death. So any legal provisions needs to be very thoroughly vetted by a lawyer to make sure that your interest is protected in the future. Second thing, this being a very nascent industry, there would be a lot of investments either in the form of aqua hire when you acquire a particular startup or a particular team or there may be a strategic partnership or alliances. So before entering into any of these things, make sure that you have a proper due diligence in place by either a law firm or any CA firm so, so that you do not acquire any toxic debt or, in, uh, or your balance sheet or your financials get impacted by a particular transaction. Thirdly, if your particular startup is dealing uh, is acting as a tech enabler, meaning thereby you focus only on the technology and the content is being managed by a third party, make sure the agreements are being drafted in such a manner leaving no ambiguity with respect to royalty and the copyright.